Chicago Bulls get a new GM, Mark Eversley. What are your uh, takeaways from Mark Eversley, the Bulls' new um, GM? Well, at first, I didn't know who Mark Eversley was. I, uh, I was my, and probably a lot of people, um, a lot of fans, and probably even some NBA, even some NBA people. Um, after I think after the rumor came out that Mark Eversley was going to be the GM, I immediately jumped on the internet, tried to do as much research as I could. Of course, I couldn't find anything on this guy other than, you know, he did work. He has been an executive in the NBA for a, for quite some time, and he was with the Sixers. Yeah, and it really, was. and it really, and it really wasn't until he officially got named the GM or is hired. Then all his information came back out, and I was able to find a few cool things about this guy. A um, couple of those things: uh, he's from Canada. He's a native of Canada. And he grew up. He loved playing basketball, and uh, he went to a univer- He went to a few universities in the states. Um, nothing like nothing like D one or anything like that. He ended up at Urbana University in Ohio, which is like a small a small NAIA school. And yeah, to kind of go off that, he's the first Canadian um, trained basketball player to become an NBA GM, and he's the first African-American GM for the Chicago Bulls. Now, you, you seem to have taken the positive deep dive in this. I took a different deep dive. I was kind of – he came from the 76ers, and if – they don't talk about it too much, but the 76ers have had an interesting past. So to kind of go over – Mark Eversley's um, resume, he worked for Nike in retail and marketing department. After that, Brian Ant- Colangelo hired him to work for his staff in 2006 from Nike. When, Angel- when Colangelo was let go, he moved to Washington and became the vice president of scouting for the Wizards with Colangelo. He, Colangelo ended up getting fired And he joined the 76ers and Mark Eversley went and followed him there as well. Colangelo, Colangelo, though, one of Mark Eversley's guys, was fired, though. Do you remember what he was fired for, Andrew? I remember Brian getting fired. Yes, Brian was fired. Colangelo was fired. And Eversley was one of his guys. But do you know what Colangelo was fired for? I believe it had to do with Twitter and he had burner accounts that he was replying to people on. Yes, it was a really weird situation. His wife was involved. So here, I'm going to give you a quick deep dive on it. On May 29th, 2018, The Ringer, led by, that's the Bill Simmons um, podcast and they have a little website. The Ringer published an investigation alleged alleging that Colangelo used up to five secret Twitter accounts to disparage his pre- uh, predecessors, Hinky, who Hinky is known for the trust the process and losing games on purpose. As well, and, Joel M- and they ended up getting Joel Embiid and J- uh, Okafor. The next day, the 76ers announced that they were commencing the investigation into, into matters, Colangelo denied the report in a statement, but on June 7th, 2018, Colangelo resigned as a result of the Twitter scandal. The situation related to his wife creating three of the five fake Twitter accounts involved into the leak, potential sensitive information about the 76ers. And the 76ers head coach, Brett Brown, was named to the interim general manager at the time, holding on to the position from June 7th to September 20th. And eventually they end up getting Elton Brand into the GM. Knowing all of this with Colangelo and Mark Eversley being one of Colangelo's guys, do we have the right guy in Chicago? I think so. I mean, we can't speculate too much on whether Mark was directly involved with um, Brian Colangelo's dealings with Twitter and his wife. Um, we don't know whether how, how we don't know how much he was involved in that sort of situation. And it hasn't really been talked, been talked about in the news media, um, which is probably a good idea. And he was probably more on the outside of it. I think Mark's primary goals with the 76ers was scouting a little bit in player development. And 
Well, he's, um, he's player developing all these guys that they were basically losing on purpose for it. it I mean, I mean, for the scouting purposes, I guess it's a good thing, but he always had the pickings of the best players, right? But I don't ended think up whether giving Embiid and Simmons for this. I think ultimately he probably was not one of like, you know, the top guys of, you know, he was probably just doing what he was just, he was pro- probably just following orders, you know, as usual. And, you know, you have to, we, we don't know how much he was involved in that situation. And now he's with the Chicago Bulls. He's not attached to Colangelo. So, I mean, only time will tell. He's, he, he has his own um, platform to build on, and we'll go off of that. But I think, I mean, it's cool that he's the first African-American GM for the Chicago Bulls, that he's the first Canadian player to move into, or basketball person to go into NBA GM. But and he has a questionable past. He has built his way up. I mean, maybe this is more politics than anything, but only time will really tell on this. Any last I mean, thoughts on that, Andrew? I mean, I wouldn't say his past is questionable. I think it would be – I think we have to look at, you know, what he's also done with NBA – like he's worked with NBA players Steve Nash and Vince Carter who vouched for him. Um you know, he worked with Masai Ujiri when he was with the Raptors as assistant GMs there. They drafted DeMar DeRozan um, in Toronto. And, you know, he's just, he's just a guy that worked up his – he worked his way up the ladder. I've listened to a couple of his interviews, uh, read a couple of his um, articles, and he's a player's first guy, which is really cool, and this is what the Bulls really need. And it start, And he even, said, he even said in one of his interviews, it starts with player development. Um, the Bulls have one player development coach on this team, and after doing a few, after doing some research and what I can find from other NBA teams around the league, is that a lot more NBA teams have more development coaches than we do. We have one, and the 76ers, Do you know how many they have? Hmm. Upwards of eight. Eight. Yeah, upwards of eight. Interesting. And. Even the even the wor- some of the worst teams, the Sacramento Kings, have at least five. So it's interesting that we only really have one person in charge of developing all these players, and you know the fact that Mark has stated that it's going to start with player development, and we need a, a heck of a lot a lot of it. We have such a young team, second youngest team in the league, and we need to be able we need to be able, be able to develop our players. Well, we'll see if they're – I mean, just looking at the potential of the Chicago Bulls, I mean, we have Laurie Markkinen who's been hit by the injury bug, Wendell who's been hit by the injury bug. You have guys like um, Chris Dunn who's – you don't really know what he's going to be in the long run in this NBA because he doesn't have much of a three-point shot and he's more known as a defender. And Otto Porter who's taking up a big chunk – chunk of the NBA salary cap on the Chicago Bulls, along with Felicio, you just want to see what they could do once they have a clean slate, which might take a year or two.